Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. If someone has told me that designing a factory is as simple as stacking a series of virtual Lego pieces together, I'm inclined to disbelieve. That is, until I see that it can be done. I'm not about to show you how to build a factory out of Lego pieces, of course. But the thing is, in Autodesk Factory Design Suite, laying out a virtual factory setup in 3D is as easy as assembling Lego pieces. That I can show you. In this case, the Lego pieces happen to be your standard factory parts. Conveyor belts, rollers and guardrails, for example. Now this version of Autodesk Inventor is slightly different from the standard versions you might get. It has a factory tab because it's part of the Autodesk factory design suite. When designing the factory layout, you can either start from blank state, an empty factory floor in 3D view, or you can start by overlaying a 2D DWG layout for your factory first. Then you specify the snapping options. Once you're ready, you can browse through the library of factory components, then drag and drop them onto the floor. In some cases, the component thumbnail is available, but the component itself is not yet in your hard drive, so you'll have to download it from a remote server at Autodesk. One reason Autodesk has used this approach may be to keep the installed library at a manageable size. This way, only people who need these pieces will download these less frequently used items, and even then, they'll only use the specific pieces they need, not the entire folder. You can also insert your very own machine assemblies, structural frames, and custom design rigs. Anything that you've designed in Autodesk Inventor or a compatible 3D CAD program that you'd like to use as part of your factory layout. You can load them in the native Inventor format, if it happens to be an Inventor file, even assemblies, and drop them and position them as if they are whole pieces. While you're in the layout mode, you can easily move into the edit mode so you can launch a specific part or an assembly and modify it. Then you can simply get back to the factory layout mode once you're finished editing your part. Positioning the pieces on the floor is very easy. The snaps that are included in the pieces themselves are pretty good at realigning themselves to the proper angle or orientation in a way that makes sense. Once you're happy with the layout, you can then produce a DWG drawing of your layout or update the one that you've been using. This will automatically launch AutoCAD. Since Inventor gives you high-res rendered view as one of the viewing options that are available even in the modeling window, complete with ray tracing and environment maps, you won't really need a lot of guesswork to see or figure out how the complete factory layout will look in the real environment. Of course, if you really need to impress someone with a fly-through or an animation or a photorealistic rendering of your factory layout, you can use Autodesk Showcase or Autodesk 3D Studio Max to create them. They are part of the factory design suite. A few words about the system used to review Autodesk Factory Design Suite. It's a system on loan from HP. The system consists of a HP Z600 workstation and a HP ZR30W display. As you can see, I'm juggling quite a number of CPU intense memory hogging engineering programs simultaneously, yet the machine still has a lot of processing power and memory left. The HP Z600 comes with a performance advisor application which gives you recommended settings based on the ISV certified software you happen to be running, like Autodesk software titles. If your driver is not up to date or compatible with the application you are using, Performance Advisor will tell you to update the drivers. The machine comes with a toolless chassis design, so if you need to swap out graphics card or add extension cards, you can easily remove the side panel without bothering with screw drivers. Just pop out the side panel, then snap it back when you're done. 
The tilted rotatable angle on the monitor also makes it easy to attach and detach cables from the bottom edge. It's quite handy because the oversized panel is not meant to be frequently lifted up or flipped over whenever you need to pluck or unpluck it. The 30-inch screen gives you a lot of display space, so it makes a difference when you're looking at detailed ray trace renderings or happen to be juggling a series of programs, each showing a large cluster of factory components. I want to thank HP for supplying the system and the monitor. When you're a kid, it's perfectly fine and even fun to build a factory in Lego. But if you're hired to build or design one as an adult, of course you'll have to do it in a precision-built professional package. Autodesk Factory Design Suite is a thoughtful bundle, not just a collection of software titles thrown into a box, but these are titles that happen to be fully connected, tied together with software bridges that make data transfer from 2D to 3D, to photorealistic imagery and animation, and then back to 2D shop drawings, very easy. The best part is, you'll find the approach almost as straightforward and fun as playing with LEGO pieces. Until next time, this is Kenneth Wong reporting from somewhere on a conveyor belt in his virtual factory.